Okay, so I'll introduce myself first. I'm Simon, I'm a UX designer on Burp Suite Professional. I'm Eugen, I'm a developer on Burp Suite Pro. I'm Russell, I'm also a developer on Burp Suite. And I'm Ryan, and I'm also a developer. Perfect. Yeah, and today we're here to speak to you about the Bamda Library. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, I'll pass over to Ryan to get us started. Okay, so, hey everyone. Uh, thank you for coming for our, to our talk about the new feature for BAMDAs, the BAMDA library. Um, but before we go into that, what actually is a BAMDA? Uh, because BERP wins, begins with a B, we name a lot of things starting with B, like B checks, BAPs, even the BWIS. Hence a BAMDA is just a BERP lander. Uh, BAMDAs are small sections of Java-based code that you can run directly from Burp Suite's interface. They are written in Java and enable you to per quickly personalize various tasks, from creating custom match and replace rules to customizing table columns and filters to suit your workflows. Uh, well, that's great, but what can you actually do with BAMDAs? View filters help you reduce the noise in highly used tables <coughs> <coughs> and identify useful information. You can find them in proxy HTTP and WebSockets history, logger and sitemap. One example for HTTP history is filtering for authorised JWT tokens. This helps you navigate to only the important traffic through the proxy. No longer lose important logger information. The Bamda capture filter unique to logger will ensure you're not saving useless requests and only retain the most helpful ones. From even more fine-grained control to filter out static content, to only capturing the most interesting responses for memory efficiency. This example would only record requests with specific text in it, helping you easily go back to logging attempts. You can use custom columns to look for patterns and detect well-known and easy-to-check vulnerabilities. They're in proxy HTTP and WebSockets history and logger. Public cores or a misconfigured access control can be easily detected and highlighted in the table, cutting down the time you need to spend manually. Match and replace is even more powerful with the addition of the Montoya API. One helpful example is that you can hijack CSP reports automatically using the collaborator. This lets you add collaborator payloads without having to check this bug manually, letting you iterate on your payloads and find detailed metadata essential to exploiting your target. But I hear you asking, or not asking, what should you not use BAMDAs for? Well, BAMDAs will let you run any Java code you want. If it's in the standard library, you can access it, which can lead to some pretty fun things that don't necessarily have to be useful. The legendary Tiberius, one of our founding members, has kindly collected a selection of such dark magics in the totally useless BAMDAs repository. Let's see a few of them and a couple more that we've made for fun. You can fade burp in and out if you want your proxy table to oscillate in and out of existence. <laughs> you can bounce the burp window around your desktop should you be bored of being able to easily click table entries. You can shut down your system uh, for obvious reasons. We, we don't have a video for this one. <laughs> and of course, if it can display, it can run bad Apple. Basically, the limit is pretty much your imagination. Whilst you can't import things at the top of the file, Java lets you use fully qualified paths, which give you access to literally everything bundled in the standard library, including UI elements, I.O. and file handling. And since it's literally just Java at the end of the day, your most accessible friendly LLM can write pretty good code for you. Just remember to fix the imports and ensure you tell it about our Montoya functions. Some useful bandas suggested by Tiberius in his recent presentation on this Discord were checking if missing strict transport security headers are prevalent or just on some responses, checking for cache control headers on non-static content, or finding cookies set without HTTP-only, secure, same site, etc. Or to explore. So, that's all well and good, but uh, what's the problem? Well. We initially designed BAMDAs to be throwaway code, something to write in two minutes and discard after five. But we heard from you that you wanted an easy way to save your BAMDAs, to iterate on them and share them easily with others. 
but you couldn't do that within Burp itself, so you were saving them in text files, even Google Docs, or sending them in Slack chats, and copy-pasting them into Burp for every single project. This was most certainly a clunky, annoying process. You wanted founders to be easier to save and access directly in Burp, so we listened. So, introducing the Bamda library, available in both Burp Suite Professional and Burp Suite Community. Now you won't need to leave Burp to save and load Bamdas. This means you'll also be able to accumulate a valuable collection of Bamdas to reuse across your project files. Let's dive in and see how it works. Here is the Bamda library, helping you manage all your Bamdas. You can create Bamdas, import them from others, export and share them to the wider community. Not only did we want to make BAMDAs easier for existing fans, but we wanted to make them easier to get into if you're new. So we packed the BAMDA library with a variety of templates provided by our, by our amazing research team. These templates are a great entry point for anyone who's not used them before, giving instantly use, useful functionality you, you can take advantage of without having to learn Java on day one. And if you're already familiar, they're easy to adapt to suit your needs. And if you already have an idea of what you want to work on, you can create a blank BAMDA too. Wait for the video. So, you found a BAMDA you love, or perhaps your colleague is sharing their essential collection with you. Easily import BAMDAs, including folders, into Burp. Burp will recurse down the folders, making it easy to import large collections of BAMDAs like the entire GitHub repo. We'll get back to that in a bit. Or maybe you want to share your latest BAMDA creation. You can export one or many BAMDAs directly from Burp, perfect to be shared on Discord or uploaded to GitHub. Your BAMDA library is shared across project files, so you'll likely want to manage them quite carefully. You can delete ones you no longer need, duplicate ones, and edit all in one place. Within the editor itself, you can load BAMDAs from the library, edit them, and save your new creations back to it. You can even use hotkeys to navigate the editor quickly. This gives you the power of BAMDAs without having to move away from where you're working. Here's a GIF to show you how this works. So here we're loading, loading a BAMDA from the library, editing it, and saving it back to the library, all seamlessly within the editor. And you can do this everywhere you have BAMDAs. Please note that some of these BAMDAs are only available in Burp Suite Professional, such as Match and Replace and Custom Columns. One of the most important parts of this whole feature is the community around BAMDAs. Um, we're, show we're now showcasing the BAMDA GitHub repository everywhere BAMDAs are, hopefully helping you all to discover the next best way to enhance your pen testing. The current BAP Store extension, BCheck Helper, will soon undergo a major update including a rename to provide the functionality of a BAMDA store, integrating your favourite GitHub repository directly within Burp. Now we'll have a quick look behind the scenes at how we handle BAMDAs in the library and some other interesting functionality. So in the library we're using a unique ID on every BAMDA so that when you import BAMDAs, especially if they already exist in your library, Burp can figure out what's new versus what's already in there. If you import a BAMDA that shares an existing ID, you'll be prompted to decide which one to keep. If you want both, the imported one just gets assigned a fresh ID. This also means that when we export, uh, that, we also, that we export that ID along with the BAMDA, so whenever you bring BAMDAs in or send them out, there's always a consistent way to keep track of them, even if you import multiple versions from a repository over time. It's also useful to know that you have the ability to drop requests in the match and replace BAMDA. This can be achieved by setting the service to null on the request. And on the horizon for BAMDAs is custom actions. This is a brand new type of BAMDA in Repeater. 
These will provide the ability to ask arbitrary questions about your requests in Repeater. The banders can be run manually or toggled to run each time a request is sent. You'll be able to see the results in the output section. Have you tried the Bander library? If so, we'd love your feedback. Fill out the survey to share your thoughts. We always appreciate hearing from you. If you're interested in a follow-up video call to discuss your experience, let us know in the survey. That's it for the presentation. Now we'll answer any questions. So yeah, if you could um, either type your questions in the chat or ask to speak, we can uh, we can give you permission to speak. And we'll leave up the link to the feedback as well for, uh, for the rest of the session. <clears throat> A few people typing, so I'll wait, see what happens. So, question from Goatsniff. Are you looking for contributions to the Bamda repo or are you picking slash making your own Bamdas? Both, I think, are we? So we're adding, so, so the templates are created by our research team, so we've added those directly into Burp. But yes, we're absolutely looking for contributions to our repo as well, aren't we? There's already yeah. a, a bunch of contributions in the repo already from, from people. Yeah, feel free um, to pull request and add anything you feel would be useful to everyone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and we, we've we spent quite a bit of engineering effort, quite a bit of design thinking around how the imports from GitHub work, like we mentioned in the presentation, we've got U IDs behind the scenes, so if people are constantly pulling down the repo and importing that back to Burp, that we can sort of help you manage manage that, so we're expecting that the repo will be a valuable source of bandwidth for everybody, so yeah, please do, please do share those. Uh, Agari's asked, uh, we can't input from GitHub yet, correct? Will other providers, e.g. GitLab, be supported? Um, so, not directly, but you can always download the entire zip of the GitHub from the the actual like GitHub. So you can download the zip, and if you extract that, uh, we will basically recur through all of the folders. So you'd, it's like three clicks, um, and that will work for basically any repository. Yeah. So that would work. Would that work for GitLab too? Would it? Yeah. 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 Okay, Just cool. download the zip, extract it as a folder, and then import from the entire folder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Import that Correct. folder into Burp. Yeah. Uh, question from Nick C. <clears throat> if you have multiple Burp installs and other customer provider laptops, what's the quickest way to copy over your Bamda library instead of adding each one manually? I see there's a forward slash Burp suite Bamdas. With Bamdas in it, can we just copy these over to the customer machine, or is there a better way? Well, you could, but it's probably not the best way to do it. So um, I would probably recommend that you just export the Bamdas and uh, zip them up, and then mm -hmm. send them to whoever needs to import them. So go into your Bamda library in the UI, select them all, export them to a folder, and then re-import that folder on the next laptop. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's the best way. Okay. Because because there's a unique ID behind each one, then it would enable you to be able to kind of keep that up to date by if you do make any changes, re-exporting it, re-importing it into your other implementations of Burp, and then that would update the the the, the appropriate bandas that you'd changed. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Nick. Um, and then one from Anjay. Uh, with exporting a Bamda, are they normalized in the way of white space characters so they look so they look the same on Git or in Burp? Short answer, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the white space is retained um, so that what you see in GitHub and what you see, you know, hopefully in the Bamda editor and what you see in the library should all match. Longer answer, like you can have any special characters you want in the title because we store it sort of in the text in the file. Um, the actual name of it will get normalized, so it's compatible with file systems. Mm -hmm. Cool. Another one from Nick C. Would you have to import each one one at a time? No. So no, you can no, bulk you can select. You can import folders at the folder level. Yeah. Yeah. So you can. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> and I already answered, but yes, you can do all that through the UI, Nick. So that's. In books, that's cool. 
Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, as I mentioned, we've recorded this, so we'll um, we'll share this back on on Discord. Have a nice uh, rest of your day, evening. Uh, thank you, everybody, um, and thanks for for being uh, on Discord and using Burp Suite. Thanks, guys. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye, guys. bye. Bye. <laughs>